Hi there and welcome back to the IAB YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about a sensitive topic that should never have been a thing in the first place but unfortunately still happens in today's society, which is racism. Throughout history there has been many black and ethnic minority people that have had to suffer to make the world somewhat of a better place and today we will take you through that history. It is true that the first day of the 1936 Berlin Olympics, Hitler met and shook hands with all the German gold medalists. He also shook hands with some of the Finnish athletes. However, after Jesse Owens won his first gold medal, he was the first black athlete in the 1936 Olympics to do so, and Hitler did not shake his hand. In fact, he did not congratulate any gold medalists after the first day of the competition. Taking the knee is not something new as back in 1965, Martin Luther King was the first to take a knee against racism and injustice during a march in Selma. This was a powerful pose. However, over 50 years later, there is still the same amount of institutional racism. This guy, uh, Drew Brees from the New Orleans Saints, he's a massive NFL player and admits to the fact that a majority of his team are black guys. Basically still tried to undermine what Colin Kaepernick did two years ago, three years can ago you, now. Can you remind people who don't know about this? Colin Kaepernick was the man who knelt first during the national anthem, predominantly for what we believe was because of police brutality. And he believed that the national anthem for that reason was not representing the thing that they said it should represent, which was freedom and bravery. And equality. And, and equality, yeah. And at the time he was basically told F off F off you've yeah. done in this league no one signed him from no. what i remember they froze him out but what was more amazing was he was such a great talent as well he was audacious at yeah. that time yeah yes. he, he was very good so he wasn't let's be clear he wasn't the best in the league but he also wasn't the level where you go yeah you can't play so the fact that they got rid of him was astounding and now he's been proven right in many regards hasn't the nfl could not be on the worst side of history yeah. here the fact that you froze out a guy who was saying something that was felt so right ridiculous and the coverage of this story here shows exactly why racism is a institutional and b still a problem because the people covering lebron james and colin kaepernick said shut up you've got a contract you're just a sports star the racist people who are in the media heard drew Brees, who said you need to be quiet you shouldn't be kneeling during the national anthem said finally a sports star who speaks out and what's the difference between these two black and white guys just before the biggest game in england's history for over 55 years, the players took the knee in a powerful way in showing their stance against racism, which they did before every game throughout the Euro 2020 tournament. By the end, it was clear why they insisted on it. England's first game of the Euros was against Croatia, where England were successful with a 1-0 win thanks to Raheem Sterling. Before the game started, the England team took the knee. However, the crowd booed them for doing so. After this, Priti Patel was interviewed about her thoughts on this situation. Extent as well, it's all well to support a cause and you know make your voices heard. But actually, quite frankly, and we saw last year in particular with some of the the protests that took place. I speak now very much from what I saw in the impact on policing. It was devastating outcomes. The, the England fans are right to boo. Well, that's a choice for them, quite frankly. Would you would you be booed well, if you're in the stands? I, 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 I've, I've not gone to a football match to even sort of, you know, contemplate that. But I, I maintain my point, quite frankly, that we learn from our past, we don't try and rewrite it. After the final, we all know Jaden Sancho, Marcus Rashford and Bakayo Saka all received racist abuse just because they didn't score their penalty. After this, Priti Patel tweeted out saying she was disgusted by the abuse that these players were receiving, and quite rightly so. However, this contradicted what she said after the Croatia game. So Tyrone Bings, Aston Villa defender, brought it up and challenged her point. For a man who misses penalty in the 1996 Euro semi-finals against Germany, Gareth Southgate knew the pressure you feel when taking a penalty for your country. Many pundits said after the game that putting that much pressure on a 19-year-old kid who had never taken a professional penalty in his career beforehand over experienced players such as Raheem Sterling, John Stones or Jack Grealish may have been the wrong decision. Sterling or Grealish, you cannot sit there and have a young kid walk up ahead of you. You can't. I don't you care if they, you're... You think they should have volunteered you have, before? You can't sit there and go, I see a young kid, 90, a child walking up in front of me and I've played a lot more games, I've got a lot more experience. Sterling has won trophies. I'm not saying he wasn't prepared. Garrett might have been thinking you're going to be six or seven. You can't sit there. That must be hard to take. You've got to get in front of this young kid and say, listen, I'll step up before you. However, Jack Grealish had something to say about that. 
Twitter admitted to removing over 1,000 posts after the initial 24 hours after the final. And Facebook, who own Instagram, said they also did the same. However, they did not do enough, as many tweets were still left on these platforms. However, the abuse wasn't just online. Straight after the penalty shootout, Marcus Rashford's mural was defaced. This then went viral overnight, and the following morning, it was quickly rectified, and the abusive graffiti was covered up. Then the community came together and placed supportive messages over the abuse and covered the graffiti on the mural. It is ironic that many of the racist abuse was sent out by people who were reliant on Rashford using his platform to stand up to the government, making sure they did not stop feeding the children who are entitled to free school meals just because they were not at school. After many public tweets from Rashford, the government finally did the right thing and gave food packages to school where the children would come with their parents and be able to collect them. If it wasn't for Rashford, many of these children would have gone hungry throughout the pandemic and many parents would have struggled even more than they already did. When Rashford was fighting to feed the nation, he was fighting for all children, no matter of their skin colour, background or religion. Then for missing one penalty kick, he received a substantial amount of racial abuse. After these players received racist abuse, three women decided to set up a petition to ban racists for life from all football games. After it went viral that the three players that didn't score their penalties received racist abuse, they all received thousands of positive messages overwhelming the minority of racists. After a few days of recovering from the devastation of just missing out on the country's first international trophy in 55 years, came out with statements apologising and letting people know how they felt. One wise man once said, If you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. Sadly, racism is still around today. But we all know for a fact that racism is taught and you're not born racist. So if you are able to be taught how to hate, you should be able to taught how to love. As love is more natural to give out. Racism is not acceptable. End of. Hold everybody around you accountable for their actions and what they say. Whether it is your family, friends, partner, colleagues, or more importantly, our authorities.